we're going to do our carols live during the service this morning with pre-recorded videos because they're songs that most people know. And um, Alan knows the music, so we can sort of surprise him, and he's being gracious enough to let us um, ask him to do that. Before we begin worship, we just have a few announcements, so let's go through those right now. We have a, let's see, we have a Yankee Swap this afternoon at 5 o'clock, if anybody cares to join us. Now, I, I, um, I've attended one. I haven't run one. The one I attended was crazy fun. So you can feel free, you know, to have your nibbles and your adult beverages with you and uh, join us if you'd like. And we will um, do our best and, and um, actually try to exchange crazy gifts. So uh, read the email for more information about that. Now, um, next week, Epiphany Weekend is actually something of a big weekend for us because one, choirism. So if anybody's been thinking about joining the choir, nine o'clock this coming Sunday, not today, obviously, next Sunday, we resume with new, I believe, new pieces that you all are beginning to prepare. And we would love to have any new voices that wish to join us. Additionally, on that Sunday, we are having new members join us. And we have adults and families both joining us. So, you know, welcome to the people that are coming to be part of our community. And we look forward to doing that. This is the first time we've done that by Zooms, I think. So we're making a covenant together and we'll be doing it all virtually. So all, all exciting, all cool. That would, be, that would be what I have. If you have Advent candles, you are very welcome to go ahead and light them um, or do it during the first, the time when we play the centering music. So let me just make sure that all the people that we need to have be co-hosts are in and able to um, share their stuff. Hang on, we had a little internet disruption, so we're, we're, we're resuming. And this morning, if all things go well, we're going to begin with centering music. Um, Actually, you know what, we're going we're gonna to switch the order, Alan, because we need to give people time to recover from the internet stuff. So Alan is going to play us, Oh, Come All You Faithful. I'm going to put up the lyrics, so bear with me, because we're, uh, we're, we're ringing this whole part of things. Oh, look, I even found it. Cool. All right, so here we go. Oh, that's Joy to the World, not Oh, Come All You Faithful. <laughs> to stop the share and try again. <laughs> uh, you had the right one. I did? Oh, well, I'm glad. It, it wasn't showing me the right one, but I'm glad you saw the right one. Okay. There we go. Now I can see it too. Yay. All right, go for it, Alan.
I keep starting to chat and I, I forget that I've, I've muted myself too, so then I'm talking to you and you have no idea that I'm talking to all of you, but I am. So I'm just double checking to see that we have okay internet connection for sharing a couple of other things. Um, let's try now centering ourselves with flute music by Jeanette. to unmute and uh, share your appreciation for Jeanette's offering of the flute, if you would. Beautiful. Beautiful. As well as Alan's live playing. You know, sometimes you know, <laughs> we're, we're definitely in a world of balance right now and equilibrium and also of quickly adapting when circumstances require it. And so the beauty of being in the sanctuary is that we can go between live and um, virtual to some extent, and it may not always be the best of everything, but we can be together and find ways to share. And so with thanks for technology when it works and with thanks for <laughs> tradition and things that have always worked for us when we can share those as well, we, are, we give gratitude, which is a wonderful, segue this morning right now is the time when we share prayers of the people and we begin always with prayers of concern so if you have prayers that you feel able to share out loud i am inviting you to do that now and if you have prayers that you hold in your heart and cannot share out loud know that we will be lifting them up in the best way that we are able while honoring privacy. So that being said, do we have any prayer requests? Kevin, you are a good lead in. Why don't you go first? Kevin, I can't hear you. Are you talking? I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, now I can hear you. Try again. Perfect. Prayer for Reverend Gail and Chris and Pastor Nathan and Jennifer and my friend Paul who has serious back pain and Bobby who has scoliosis and prayer for um, Jeanette and Sue for good health and prayer for um, the uh, frontline workers, the first responders, the doctors and nurses in the military. Thank you, Kevin. That's much appreciated. If others wish to um, you know, pray, I, I invite you to unmute and just please chime in as opposed to making me try to find your raised hand. A prayer yeah, for my surgery. Okay, Judy, go. We have a prayer for Deanna. Deanna has having some surgery tomorrow morning. Okay. Deanna, did you want to add anything to that? No? Okay. Somebody else was trying to do a prayer, so please go ahead. Um, just as my sister had said the other day that we did lose Emily this week. Um, we did have her cremated and got her back just before Christmas, so that was kind of a blessing to have her here with us. Mm. Um, our other Pyrenees, even though he has a lot of issues and has worked through them, 
I think he's kind of missing her and, you know, we're just trying to watch him and make sure he's doing okay. But it's just, it's like you're on edge, you know, is he going to make it? Is he going to make it? And so mm -hmm. we're just ask for faith, yeah. you know, that's about all I can do. So we recognize the many beloved members of our, our families, our, our four-footed ones, our winged ones, and our uh, maybe even a reptilian ones, <laughs> or and ones that swim, but our, um, and our human people that we love so much who are going. Wendy, do you, do you want to share a prayer? Uh, yes. Um, huge prayers for Sasha, because she's going to need them. And she's strong as anything, and I hope... Uh, all goes well for her. I believe her surgery is going to be Tuesday. Okay, so new news that we have an, an upcoming prayer uh, and hope for the outcome for Sasha's surgery, which is imminent and also quite serious. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes when people are speeded into surgery, we know that, that that's an indicator that there's a lot on the plate there. So we surround her with light and love. Sue, do you want to add anything to that? Okay. Oh. Do you have, do we have permission to share that prayer, Sue? Okay. So um, Sue, on behalf of another member of our church, is also raising up prayers for Richard Himmelwright um, for the next steps for his well-being and for Sandra, who is his partner through all of this, and for their whole family, that they too may be held in the light as they, um, they make this journey together through his diagnosis. Uh, we have people that we are, <laughs> she sends a kiss, she sends a kiss. Um, we have many people that have either just had some type of a procedure, you know, Doc, Cindy's husband is doing well after his surgery. I believe, Cindy, is that, can we do thumbs up if we're correct about that? Cindy, is he... Yep, okay, I got a thumbs up. I got two thumbs up. <laughs> I've got multiple thumbs up there. All right. Um, several people have had procedures. Some of them have been shared. Some of them have not been shared. But prayers for all those members of our body of Christ, which is what we call ourselves, this body of love that is very human and has both vulnerability and strength and resilience within it. So prayers for those that we love who are living in um, nursing homes or other places where they can't be directly with us for their safety and well-being in those places. For people who are at home with their loved ones in changed bodies, and we pray for bodies beginning at the top with our, our brain and our mind. Um, for all the things that can be happening in the brain and the mind, for our eyes and our nose and our mouth and our throat and our ears, for our lymphatic systems, for our spines and the nerves that run through the spines, the synapses of the brain and the ways that the brain is connected and sometimes undone through mental health or Alzheimer's or in so many different kinds of diagnoses, epilepsy, there's so many things that can happen in our brains. For our hearts and our lungs, for our livers, our kidneys, our spleens, for our pancreas, for our colon, for our whole GI tract from top to bottom, for the skin that binds us together and the muscles and the bones for all the parts of the body that we didn't specifically name, the hands and the feet, the joints, the shoulders, the knees, the hips, so many parts of our body that need our attention, that, that carry us and bind us together and also sometimes become our challenge. 
for the resilience and creativity with which we live in adapted and changed circumstances and either from within that place or as someone who vigils and journeys with another as caregiver and family member and friend, may we be held in the light and may we find light in each other and be the light for each other in these times and through these challenges. We lift up to, out of concern certainly, Nashville, which is making sense of the events from Christmas Day and with gratitude for any grace that may have occurred there that reduced the harm that was intended. And as hard as it may be, we pray for those who believe that choosing violence is somehow the path that they are called to. We pray for the people that can be harmful to others, but who are in fact harming themselves and who are victims of harm in some way that we may not understand. We pray for those that we think of as being enemy or other. Do you all have prayers of joy you wish to lift up this morning? I have one. Kev, let other people start us out. Okay, go ahead, Meg. I'm very grateful that the vaccine is finally coming. Um, residents of the veterans home got it, I believe, Christmas Eve. My dad's going to get the vaccine on Tuesday. And we're rejoicing that there might be hope coming. That's right. So uh, rejoicing for the first wave of vaccinations that are beginning to be available. And we pray also for the vision of different organizations that may try to make it available in parts of the world that are hearing that they might not be inoculated for two years from now unless things change, that there might be an equitable distribution of the vaccination so that all people can have a chance at safety. Other prayers of hope. Kevin, I know you have one, so why don't you share with us, please? You know, Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm grateful that we're not condemned by our sin. And I'm grateful that um, God is fighting our battles. And I'm grateful that the blood of my veins is tried and true. And I'm grateful that when Job went through what he went through, all the torture, horrible pain and suffering for many years, when he came through it in the end, he came out pure as gold. Thank you, Kevin. Kevin's prayers are getting more fascinating every week. <laughs> and maybe less specific, but very relevant in their way because he's found something that he needs to hear. Anybody else want to unmute and share any joy? And forgive me if I'm not seeing you, please, Linda. I just wanted to thank everyone who contributed to make the Advent season Christmas so special. I mean, from making the logs to passing out the candles and doing everything Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, everyone did a fabulous job, thanks. Yeah, I, I, thank I you. wanna say. Thank you, Linda, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I, I walked into the church this week just to see what I'm missing. <laughs> We're all missing, most of us. Um, it is so beautiful. All those incredible amount, amount of uh, crutches and the, the, the beautiful manger scenes from all over the world. I, I, I never realized there could be so many interpretations of the same event, you know? So that was, that was really great. And the other thing I wanted to say is my daughter and granddaughter are here from New York. And I'm very grateful that the fact that they were able to get uh, tested and get a negative responses and that they could come. Thank you, Arden. Indeed, you know, I think what we're finding again is that this balance of uh, people need a physical place to come if they can, 
and uh, an in-person embodied ritual when it's possible. So the ways that the church has been able to be physically available and yet the ways that we are virtually connected across uh, countries on Christmas Day and people dialed in from Italy joining us and other and two other states and we always have people from multiple states on our Sunday mornings but at five o'clock on uh, Christmas Eve we had people that came in person and we we did what we always do we shared the little white candle the light with each other and over 50 people were here and they did it safely and you know it was still modified but the different ways that we become church, that we become love for each other, and Linda named so many of them, you know, meditate on how you have felt and experienced connection in this time. And you may be more surprised than you know by how many different ways love has shown up for you. And if you find that you know of people that need additional connection, please bring them to our attention in the same way that uh, it takes many of us to create the, the church and the music and the, the setting up of the outside and the setting up of the inside and the imagining of all these things. It takes many, many people and many hands to do the outreach that we have been doing all along. You know, the baskets that the Whitney Community Center put together for many people, the letters that have been sent out, and also just the showing up as visitors. We, we don't always know what's happening. And if people want to be connected, it may take another person to let us know. So please um, let us know where there may still be a disconnect in ways that we can be helpful and healing for that. Let us pray. Oh, holy God, we give thanks for the Holy Spirit that becomes the wind and the air that fills the pipes of the organ, that fills our lungs, that transforms challenge into creative opportunity and possibility that becomes peace, that becomes healing, that becomes that which binds us across time, across geography, across everything that could divide us and helps us see each other and recognize in each other the significance and the holiness of every life and every day that we are gifted to have. We ask for your presence for those that we call our faith partners, the Chikanga Church in the city of Mutare in Zimbabwe, the villages in Honduras, the places where our children plant their feet and call home, or our other beloved family members and close friends make their homes. These become places where our light is kindled, and through them, within one simple relationship we are all connected and the light that we share candle to candle becomes the light that we share life to life and we give thanks for this possibility and we ask to be reminded that you give us the light and we do not have to be light alone that we are light for each other and light together and when our light seems as if it's going out you will rekindle that light for us. Amen. And may we pray together now, out loud, so please unmute our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Lord, who art in heaven, heaven. hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, will be done. On, on earth, earth, as, earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for Amen. Amen. And now, praying that technology is still with us, we have greetings from Zimbabwe. They sent us two Christmas songs. We're going to play one now, and we'll play one just a little bit later. 
by way of their holiday greeting, and we sent them links to the choir's songs so that they could share their song, our songs in Zimbabwe this day, seven hours ahead of us, of course. this on their their videos so whatever you see and what if they cut it off or however that goes that's just um that's what they were able to send to us but we can see that they are singing together <laughs> we might be a little jealous of that part <laughs> i would turn us now to scripture and today especially inspired by the fact that zimbabwe sent their greetings to us. We are turning to the greetings that we heard during the nativity stories and reading from the different accounts, both of Matthew and Luke, the greetings from heaven sent by the angels to the different people that are part of the nativity story. Let us read those together now. From the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1. The angel said to Zechariah, husband of Elizabeth and father of John the Baptist, Do not be afraid, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you will name him John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. Next, in the Matthew chapter 1, verses 20 and 21, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, 
for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people. And again from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 27 through 35, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a virgin, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and he said, Greetings, favored one. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will bear a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. Mary said to the angel, How can this be? The angel said to her, For nothing will be impossible with God. And then from the second chapter of the Gospel of Luke, excerpts from verses 9 through 15, Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace. And a final reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 12 through 13. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, wise men from the east left for their own country by another road. And now after they had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. So ends the reading. And please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Truly, this is simply a focus on greetings. At this time of year, people tend to send out cards, to send out letters and updates by email, by postage stamp, by phone call, by Zoom, by the many ways that we connect. And we are finding new and cherished ways to do it when we are otherwise disconnected from each other. When we talk about love showing up in our lives, it shows up as a greeting. And this season is simply a reminder that God is knocking on your door more often than you even realize. That when somebody shows up at just the right time, or maybe even the wrong time, but for the right reason, or at a time when you would have preferred to stay insulated and apart from others, but somebody brought you back into connection. That is love showing up. And every time love shows up, each of us for each other, or love for someone who is otherwise alone, that is a holy act. And it is an act that begins when angels talk to you in your sleep or show up in the middle of your regular routine and say, hey, I have some news for you. Guess what? Your life's about to be turned over. And we know that some people, upon hearing that, a lot of prophets were famous for running in the other direction because they did not really want their lives to be disrupted. Uh, But that doesn't tend to work. God shows up anyway, and love shows up anyway, and eventually calls you back into connection, sometimes to do incredibly difficult things, but sometimes just to be the right person, the right voice, the right form of love at the right time. I was not expecting songs to show up from Zimbabwe. They came in WhatsApp last night, recorded on Christmas Day by the church, and so happily we already had music that we could exchange with them, and so we sent that last night. And then this morning, we decided to wing it, and Alan was here, and we played the music live, and it felt really good, and people know the words, so we could get away with that. And there are just so many ways where greetings show up, and you did not expect them, and they, they just reframe everything for you, and they make you grateful or give you a new perspective or possibly 
reconnect you when you felt that you were disconnected. And I say this fully aware, as I said in the prayer, that not everybody is feeling connected, that this difficult time in the world, in the nation, in our areas, can make us feel alone or overwhelmed that there are things happening for everybody that are already difficult and that the confounding challenges of pandemic and social unrest that even causes people to decide to bomb a city or brings people to the brink of, of mental health crises and addiction. And we know, we know that there are always challenges and that they are, are bigger because of all the things that are happening in the world, that this is why every small greeting, every holy act where you are the love that shows up or you allow love to show up in your life. It's easy to be the doer, but this morning at the eight o'clock, we talked about the fact that sometimes we have to let what happens happen, that we have to let love in in whatever way it shows up, we just have to let love be with us. And sometimes we have to simply stop doing and be. And that may be the most difficult challenge, even in this season, right? It's a season of doing and tasks and lists. But the greeting of God calls us to attention and says, pause, stop. Look at the world and the life around you and find the holiness in it. Even if most of your list is one of, oh my gosh, how am I going to get this done and what's going on in the world? Find the parts of life that remind you what is holy, that brings you back into connection, that does in fact ground you in the centeredness of right where you are and what is possible simply by opening yourself to that connection, being surprised by that holy greeting, and remembering that you have to start in the moment where you find yourself right now. That's the only time that you have with you right now. So be, be in that moment and begin there and the rest will come. For indeed, all things are possible with God. And so as the angels tell us, do not be afraid. Follow the light. Thanks be to God. I hope you guys heard all that. I'm afraid my microphone started disappearing. And so we're going to conclude our thought on greetings with a second video greeting from Zimbabwe. I believe it's also musical. <laughs>
I'm too with all of you, so just so you know, we're, um, this is all very fun. <laughs> um, can you all see me? Okay. Were you able to hear the song? Yes. No. Some people couldn't hear it. Other people could hear it and see it. Very odd. Hard to know what's going on here. Sorry about that. We will post the whole thing, so if you've sat for a few minutes in silence, um, you'll get it eventually. It, it was the holy night, silent night for you guys greeting, and for other people, it was the completely dancing musical greeting from heaven and Zimbabwe. So we're going to just remind everybody that part of the covenant that we make together is the covenant of supporting this faith community in many different ways. And we have talked about the gifts and the ways that you all show up, but one of the gifts is the gift of your giving. And so please do remember us, jxncc.org, or drop off an envelope here. I'm not, I'm not sure if the, if the little church is still there or not. It is, okay. So you can still drop off um, in, in envelopes in the little church outside, I mean inside if you want. And your time and your other treasures, the way that you all take care of each other are deeply appreciated. And now I want to move us to joy to the world. And we're going to do that again um, the way we did the, <laughs> the way we did the first carol, which is we're going to do it live. Um, give me one minute. I'm going to see if I can find the lyrics here. I just have to poke around. Got it. All right. So Alan's patiently waiting for me to have the lyrics. Okay. You guys all let me know. Can you see those lyrics? All right. Here we go. Now's a good time to um, just give Alan one more round of thanks. We're gonna, and, and, and if there was a problem with the lyrics, that's on my end, not Alan. Um, we're gonna get Alan to play one brief interlude for us. Then if you wanna stay on, you can chat for a few minutes and socialize and see each other, no rush. Go for it, Alan. Thank you. 